So far we've dealt with one good in this class. How is demand for one good figured out? What we're going to look at here is how consumers behave when they have choices between many different goods or of course between saving, which means not spending anything at all. So if somebody has a fixed amount of money and has to buy something like pizza and pop, Oreos and milk, how do they make that decision in terms of how much of each to buy? So this is what consumers are going to do each time, and the reality is, is that they're not making charts and doing this kind of thing uh, on paper, but in our heads we do go through a similar process of this. The most important thing to look at is what we call marginal utility per dollar spent, and that's this formula here. So we're basically saying how much utility do you get from the purchase of that given unit, and you divide that by the price of that unit, so that tells you how many units of utility, or how much utility you got from every dollar that you spent. The ultimate goal is to make sure that between all of the goods, the marginal utility per dollar spent is going to be equal. That means that you're getting the most for your money, if you think of it in those terms. Now there's a variety of ways to approach problems like this. I'm going to give you the most thorough way here, which is going to help you if you get stuck or if you're having some confusion with this. So this is the chart from the activity, um, activity 11 in your book, and the answer key already has the marginal utility per dollar filled in. So this is something that you should have done already. Keep in mind, as you fill these out, you always want to make sure you're dividing by the right price. So in this case, we're always dividing the marginal utility for gas by the price of gas, which in this case is $10 a gallon, or the amount of utility we get from food by the price of food, in this case 20 now, when you have to figure out how much someone like Frank is going to spend with his $130 or how much of each he's going to buy, we want to follow through the steps like this. Frank is always going to put his money towards the things that provide him the most marginal utility per dollar. So at the first step, given a choice between the first gallon of gas or the first unit of food, the marginal utility per dollar is, a, is comparing 6 to 5.75. So for every dollar he spends, he's going to get more utility from the food, or from the gas, than he would from the food. So in decision one, and we'll just make a chart here, we have gas, food, I'll call this the marginal cost, and then the total cost. So in round one, Frank decides to buy the first unit of gas. He doesn't buy any food. The cost of that decision is $10, and his total cost right now is ten dollars and this is where we're at now another thing that you might do at this point is put an x over this one so we know that he's already bought the first one or you might want to put a dot off to the side in case you make a mistake and want to go back so now frank has a choice between the second gallon of gas or the first unit of food well the the marginal utility per dollar for the gas would be five fifty or five point five units but for food, it's 5.75. So in this case, food is the better choice. So now in round two, or decision two, he buys no gas. He buys one unit of food. The cost of that decision is $20, which is based on the cost of food, which means his total cost is up to 30. So in this case, he, had 100, he has $130, so he's still got money to spend, and we'll keep going. Decision number three, let's mark that off, is between the second gas or the second food gas is higher so again one gas no food ten dollar marginal cost now we're up to a forty dollar total cost he still got some money left decision four in this case food makes more sense because it has a higher marginal utility per dollar than the gas so he's gonna buy a second unit of food which will cost twenty dollars and that brings his total spending up to sixty his fifth decision is between gas and food he buys the third unit of gas because that's higher spends the ten dollars now has a total of seventy for his sixth decision he buys food because again higher marginal utility per dollar so that's going to cost him twenty he's up to ninety next decision gasoline again because it's the 4.8 is higher than 4.7 and he's up to 100 now the fifth decision or the the seventh, eighth decision in this sequence actually provides us with kind of an interesting scenario uh, what happens here is that they have the exact same marginal utility per dollar now you have two options here if you have enough money you buy both and that's what Frank can do if you have a situation where you don't have enough money to buy both, then you would buy the one that's cheaper. But in this case, since he has enough money to buy both, 
he's going to buy one of each. That's going so we have gas, food, marginal cost of this decision is going to be thirty dollars, thirty plus twenty, and his total cost is up to one thirty, and lo and behold, Frank is out of money. So what's the optimum combination? Well, he's going to, if you add up everything that you've done on each side, and we do have seven, by the way, so he ends up right here at this spot, five units of gas, four units of food. Now, you might be saying, couldn't you just look and see where they're equal? And that could work. It doesn't always work, because if you look at the next uh, step down, they're also equal here. Of course, this one wouldn't satisfy his budget constraint because um, he'd be spending too much money. So you can do it that way, but the, the method I just showed you of going step by step while taking a little bit longer is going to help you as you answer these questions and help you keep your numbers.